Welcome to Sarita Dental College Lecture Cast and Biostatistics. This session we shall discuss about statistics around causation. That is to determine if an agent causes a disease or not. So the possible outcomes in a causation study would be diseased people with exposure, uh, healthy people with exposure, diseased people without exposure and healthy people without exposure. So the first parameter used to determine causation is called the relative risk that is to see the percentage of disease among exposed versus the percentage of disease among non-exposed. In other words you divide the so in other words it is the number of people with disease and exposure divided by the total number of people exposed by the number of people without exposure, diseased people without exposure by the total number of people who have not been exposed in the study. So it is useful to determine or compare the risk of two groups. It's used in prospective clinical trials and randomized control trials. If the RR value is greater than one, it is generally considered as there's no difference in the risk between the two groups. So the next parameter to determine causation is called the odds ratio. It is the ratio of the disease with exposure by disease without exposure by the healthy with exposure divided by healthy without exposure. So it is the probability of developing a disease when exposed. It, it can be used to determine the effect of a single risk factor on the disease outcome. It is used in case control trials rather than prospective trials. It's used more in retrospective trials to determine the odds of developing a disease. So the odds ratio when you actually plot it down would work out as the people with exposure or diseased people with exposure divided by uh, diseased people without exposure which is totally divided by uh, uh, healthy people with exposure divided by healthy people without the exposure. So when you cross multiply you would get it as diseased people with exposure multiplied by healthy people without exposure divided by the diseased people without exposure and healthy people with exposure. So the next parameter which is used to determine causation is the attributable risk. So this is the difference between the occurrence of disease among exposed versus the occurrence of disease among non-exposed divided by the occurrence of disease among exposed. It is used by policymakers to design mass health projects. The parameters may appear confusing because they are closely related to one another. However, when you logically try to deduct them, it may be easier to remember. So the next parameter to look for the causation is or related to causation is correlation. That is what are the chances that two parameters would vary in simul uh, continuously or simultaneously with one another. For example, as the red bar grows up, the green bar goes up. So this is called a positive correlation and you could also have a negative correlation wherein as the red bar goes up you may have the green bar coming down. You should always remember that correlation does not mean causation. Just because there is a correlation between two pa parameters it does not mean that one parameter causes the other parameter to move. There are some funny uh, relationships you can see to see, uh, understand this. This is a graph which is comparing the murder rate and the usage of Internet Explorer. You can see there's perfect correlation between the two. As the Internet Explorer usage is going down, murder rate is also going down. So does this mean Internet Explorer cost murders? Certainly not. And that is why you should never ever confuse correlation with causation. Just because two things seem to move together does not mean there is correlation. For example, this is a famous uh, global warming study where you can see the temperature change and you have a reduced correlation uh, CO2 concentration in the atmosphere. Another interesting correlation would be the global temperature difference and the major league baseball home run rates over time. You can see that it matches even better than the CO2 levels. So you should never ever confuse correlation with causation. There are other methods to determine if the correlation you see has any significance or is it causing the effect. So the next parameter we use to determine causation is the number needed to treat. It is the number of people who need to be treated with a preventive uh, drug to prevent one person from developing a disease. It is important in pharmacoeconomics where we will have to determine the risk benefit of giving a prophylactic drug or doing a prophylactic x-ray 
or doing a regular health checkup. So the common example is uh, we give aspirin for old patients to avoid cardiovascular disease. So these kinds of to determine whether aspirin would be useful, you would have to do a NNT calculation. So with that, we conclude on causation and statistics required to determine causation. Thank you.